these three angles add up to the one that's 180. All right, so how are we gonna how are we gonna sort of like put that together? Well, it it's like what are we doing here? What what is the math operation that you see here in this last outline? Uh, adding. Adding. So do any of those say adding down there? Um, the first and the last one and the third okay. one. So it's either, so it's, it's, it could be a couple of these, right? Now, associative property of addition, this is like going back. That's saying like two plus three plus four. If you do two plus three first, that's the same as doing two plus three plus four. And then the commutative property of addition is two plus three equals three plus two. That's switching the order. Do any of those seem to apply to what's going on here? Um, doesn't look like it. So you're, the, you're at the angle addition postulate. All right. Okay, so I see some bunch over another proof. Okay. All right, so here we go. In triangle ABC below, something is congruent to something. And we got here um, to something. Okay, so the base angles, we're trying to prove that the base angles are congruent like that. So they're, they're saying, okay, this proof does that. And you got to figure out what's going in here, what's going in in this position, okay? So the reflexive property always means that it's like equal to itself. Oh. Okay, so it's like when you look in the mirror, your reflection. So which of these down here is thing equal itself? And I guess it's kind of hard to see, but. Maybe you can see it better. Uh, let's see. Uh, BD does equal BD. Okay. So let's go look and see what that is. What is BD? Well, uh, I don't know. There is no BD. Okay, it's got to be careful here. Um, is there any other ones? I'm sorry. I'm just, is, what about this third one here? What is that? AC to AC. Okay. I was hoping maybe, yeah. So BD. Okay. I'm sorry. So they're, they're actually dropping down in altitude. BD is an angle bisector of ABC. That's this first line here. They're dropping an altitude down. All right. Like that. Okay. So the um, the altitude is that uh, divides us up into two triangles. So now you're right, there is a BD. And, and you're trying to basically prove that the triangles are congruent. So you're gonna match up that paired, that paired side, that vertical down paired side. So that you are right, it is the D, D, B, B, C equals D, C. Nice. All right, so I think we're up to this one here. So I'll see triangle ABD, ABC contains angle bisectors BF, AD, and something else, I guess CE, that intersect at so they're all angle bisectors. So that means that this angle is equal to this angle. This angle down here is equal to this angle down here. This angle down here is equal to this angle down here, like that. And um, there probably is more to it. I believe like these are 90 degrees around here at the bottom, but all right. So it says if BA is congruent to BC, so BA it's congruent to BC. So what if we draw the, the triangle without all the lines, all the stuff going on, okay? BA congruent to BC, that's an isosceles triangle. And that means that the base angle is congruent to the other base, base angle like that. All right. 
So what that means is that these two angles that are congruent add up to this one, and these two angles which are congruent add up to the one on the right, which means they're all they're all the same. And they're telling you that BCA, they're telling you that this one on the right here is 46 degrees. What is the measure of angle CXA? CXA like that. So we're trying to figure out this one kind of right in the middle there. Uh, let me draw it here. Oops, I'm sure it's going to go do another color like this. CXA, yeah. So it's asking about this angle right here. And so since since this is a bisector, we know that it's 23 degrees. Let me, let me re redraw it here. This, this little one, we know that this is 23 degrees and this is 23 degrees. So what does the three angles add up to in a triangle? Uh, 180. 180. So you have to add these up and becomes becomes 180. Uh, it would be 134. Yes. And hopefully that's the last answer. There it is. Good. All right. Um, now, is this today's assignment? Are we kind of on track, ahead, behind? Uh, we're on track. Oh, good. Excellent. There's only two assignments today, so it's just this and then... Another one. Cool. Well, yeah. Um, what is going on? Okay, that is right. Given triangle MNO, M, M, N, O, find the measure of angle M, N, O. Wait. Sorry, give it triangle MNO, find the measure <laughs> of angle MNO. Okay, boy, like a, like I'm learning to read again. Uh, MNO is up here at the top, okay? This is an isosceles triangle. We know it's an isosceles triangle because the two sides are the same. Two sides are the same, it's, a tri it's isosceles, which means that the base angles are the same. We have some help here. I always think it's good to kind of redraw it here, kind of when you're refocusing. If this is 104 degrees, the angle here that I'm calling X, X plus 104 has to add up to 180. So 76? 76, okay. So 76 degrees, okay. And then the other one must also be 76 degrees because it's isosceles, because those are those must be the same. So what is the top angle up here? How do you find that? Um, adding the the two 76s together yep. and then subtracting it by 180, and I got 28. There you go. There's your answer. All right. Well done. Hang on just a second, Marco. All right. All right. Um, is it possible for GE to measure measure nine units? So the idea here is like, is it possible for the third side to be bigger than the sum of the other two sides? And so there's a really good like thing you can do where you have like two sticks or two things. And you 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 basically have uh you know there's a leg, and if if we just if we just like barely bend them like like imagine there's the tiniest little V there, and there's like a third side there that's connected, like think of a really really you know shallow triangle like that. The maximum this side can be is the sum of these two, but it's got to be just a tiny bit smaller than that, and then. And then it's hard to, but then, then you can go the other direction. You could say, okay, what if we like overlay them? So they're just like overlaid on top of each other. 
then the subtraction of them is the is the is the possibility for the third side. So in in short here, the third side has to be smaller than the sum of the other two sides. So this the maximum this other one could be is three plus five, which is eight. So which of these answers basically says like no, it can't be that because of something we just we just said. Um the second one and the third or fourth one. Okay. So we're down to those two. So no, because three plus five is eight, which which is not greater than nine. That's not true. No, because three plus five is less than nine. And uh, so it looks like that would be the best, best choice there for that. All right. All right, we got a hundred on that. Great. Yeah. All right. Just go to the next assignment now. Um, all right. You got any uh, uh, what is it, an airsoft coming up? Are you gonna head out this weekend, or is it is that too soon? I'm not sure. I hope we are. It's like I don't know. We haven't talked about it yet, but we want to go back. I was planning on buying a new gun before I went. You know. Okay. Yeah, I just don't know what to buy though. Like trying to, I'm just trying to like save money right now. Got it. Go ahead and drop those in the chat. I'll be right back with you. All right. All right. Um, looks like you dropped a few in the chat there. Yeah. Let's see if I can get back to the right one here. All right. Here we go. All right. Lots of words. Lots of words. So the following is an incomplete paragraph proof proving that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So that what like what's that what that's referring to is that the sides that are parallel opposite from each other they're congruent and these other sides they're also congruent according to the given information a b is parallel to d c right uh, and d c is parallel to a d so constructing a diagonal from a to c so that's here with a straight edge Okay, so now we got to, that, that's where we get to fill in this blank here. So what you've got to do is look at these answers. And I would start with the angles. Are the angles congruent? Are the angles congruent and why? You know, BAC and DCA, ABC and CDA. Hmm. Um, would it be the last one? Angles A, B, C. So that so what's that one's up here, and C, D, A. 
They, they are congruent. Um, opposite sides are congruent, but that doesn't have anything to do with the diagonal, unfortunately. Like it's it's not there with the diagonal. Um, so that that's where I, I would say, well, that even though that's true, I don't think that's what they're looking for because it's there's nothing to do with the diagonal. Like things have to follow. And if you if, you know somebody tells you a story and you're like all over the place with their details, you're like, no, no, like this follows from this. That's what we're looking, kind of looking for here. So BAC, BAC, that's 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 this one right here. It's congruent to DCA, DCA. But are these the same side? Are they on the same side of the of the diagonal? No. They're not. So that one's out as well. So unfortunately, unfortunately, nothing to do with that. Now, is it diagonal BD or AC that we're that we're looking at uh ac okay so i would say it's probably that one based on what you just Is that okay yeah. A lot of proofs. All right. The figure below shows rectangle A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. There you go. That means that the opposite sides are congruent. They're parallel. The diagonals are the same. There's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, now, what I like to do is go down to the thing where it's blank and say, okay, alternate interior angles theorem. So what that means is if there's a diagonal like this and like this, it's kind of a Z, those angles are congruent. Or if it's going the other direction, those angles are, are congruent. Those are alternate interior, all right? So you have to figure out, well, which one is it that matches up with this, um, this right here? So let me, let me do something here to maybe help. Um, and you know, one of the limitations is just so which angles are congruent? Um, which are alternate interior based on what I was kind of showing you here in this this picture that that are in this list? Like you need to go to each angle group and see which one is kind of you know this is this Z here or this other Z. All right. Any of those stand out to you? I'm not sure. I'm I was looking at the third one. All right. So A C D A C D, that's this one right here. That's 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 possible. And uh and then the other one, A C A C E. So those are on the same line. So it can't be that. I mean A oh. to C D no, E, unless no. I'm misreading it. Maybe the second one. All right, so we got A B E. That's that's this one right here. That's looking okay. And then A D E. A D E is this one right here. They're they're on the same side though. They're not like we need the like it's using this one. It's got to be the one on the other side here. Oh. Um, so let me let me clear out. You know some of these. Oops, didn't mean to do all that.
Oh, would it be the first one? So A, D, B is right up here. And then C, 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 B, D is right here. Huh. Let's go to the last one there. A, C, E, A, C. No, that can't be right. I must yeah. have missed something here. Um, all right, so I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be difficult. I, I just, I thought that, so it's either going to be that this angle is congruent to this angle or, or we're using the other diagonal, this angle is congruent to this angle. Like those are the only two possibilities. So I don't know why we're not finding this. Um, a, C, B, is A, C, B in there or not? That's that's this top right one. A C B. Nope. Is C B D in there? That, it, that is in there. C B D is in there, but then it's A. There it is. I'm sorry, it's the first one. So A D B is this angle down here. All right. And then uh the top one, C B D is this one right up here. Yeah. So I think that that does it for that one. Boy, those take those take those proofs really sometimes are just. All right, so we got number three here. Triangle ABCD is a parale parallelogram with diagonal AC. Measure of angle CAB is 24 degrees. The measure of angle ADC is 127 degrees. What is the measure of angle DAC? So they they want this one right here. That's the one we're trying to find. Um, any idea how to maybe start this? Any, anything come to mind from what we've been working on today? Um, well, it says 24 on that one side. Okay. And they look like they're like. So this one is also 24 by alternate interior angles. Yeah. Okay. So now, now what do you have in terms of this triangle? What's the. Well, it has to equal 180. There you go. So, uh, so it equal one fifty one if you added them. Good. So it'd be twenty nine. There it is. Good. All right. In parallelogram EFGH, the measure of angle F is three x minus ten. The measure of angle G is. 5x plus 22, what is the measure of angle G? So again, probably good to draw it here just to kind of have some reference. It doesn't have to be very good. E, F, G, and H, the order matters. It's a direction. So angle F is 3x minus 10. And angle G is 5x plus 22. So we talked about, I think at the beginning, there's two things that happen in geometry. Either set things equal or they add up to something. This is the latter. The, these two angles, the consecutive angles in a parallelogram, they add up to 180. So what I'd like you to do is, is take 3x minus 10 at 5x plus 22, set it equal to 180, and uh, see what you, uh, what you come up with. Oh, so Correct. like, so like you, both of those- add together. Yeah, those add together equal 180. All right. And there you go. All right. So I will be right back. I'll give you a chance to work on this. So I'll check with you back in like two minutes. All right.
Right, I am back. How did you do on this one? Um, I got my answer as 127. For angle G or just, uh, and what did you get for X? Uh, X, I got 21. Uh, hmm, that doesn't look right. Okay, let's take a look here. 3X minus 10 plus 5X plus 22 equals 180. Yeah. So it's 8X, excuse me, plus 12 equals 180. Rack 12 from both sides. 8X equals 168. Divide by 8, X equals 21. That's what you said. Yeah. Boy. So angle G though. Oh, yeah. you're right. I'm sorry. I'm thinking they're congruent. You are absolutely correct. And uh, I apologize. I didn't mean to not be, uh, I, I just did, you know, visually, I just thought there was something else. So well done. Well done. Uh, it's totally fine. I get it. All right. So let's see here. Um, and uh, sometimes when I'm in class, I'm like, teacher, you're doing it wrong. But then I'm doing it wrong. So I think I did it right. I was like, oh. So it's, 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 it's a different, yeah. In a different day, I would I would be more on top of this, but for right now, I'm just I'm just a little bit off, uh, wonky, as I say. All right. Um, yeah, I get it. I didn't expect to be very busy this summer, and I'm as busy as I ever have been, which is great. It's great. I just you know you just like you know, mentally I wasn't prepared for it. Yeah. So. All right, the figure shows rectangle RSTW, RSTW. Which of the following conditions satisfies the criteria for rectangles? For the measure of angle S, R, Z equals 40. Uh, okay, so they're saying, does this, the fact that this angle is 40, does that satisfy the criteria for rectangles? Um, um, STZ is 40. Okay. Um, there's a problem there. I mean, for it to be a rectangle, it has to have 90 degree angles yeah. like that. And this one sure doesn't. Yeah. So not, uh, not sure. So SRW, S. R W is 80. That means the whole thing is 80. That doesn't seem right either. T W R T W R. That's the whole angle is 80. That's wrong too. So the only one that makes sense is this first one. Because what it is saying, what it is saying, this first one is saying that S to R to Z, the thing right here is 40. All that's saying is that these are parallel. I don't think that's a sufficient condition, but maybe it's a necessary. Um, I don't know. They, like what I was expecting is them to say like the angle's 90 or like the other angle 50 so that you knew that it added up to 90, but they're not saying that in this. All right. So I guess I would go with letter, letter A. All right, we got a hundred on that too. Wow. Hey, you may be a little off today, but you're still doing good. We're, we're doing good. You're pressing the buttons. I can't. I can't take any credit. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm just giving you the advice. You're 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 having to figure out what you're uh, working on. Yeah. So. All right. Let me just pull up the next. All right, I sent over a few more. Okay. All 
All right, so we got a we got a rectangle J K L M J K L M on the grid, and they got transformation. So, um, oh, they're saying like, what happens if you transform um, trapezoid S T U V in the same way? So they're basically you got to figure out like what is the transformation from from like M to M prime here? Like what's what are you doing to go from M to M prime? And I would I would say it's going up and uh, and to the right or right and then up. What is the um, what is the what is the transformations in that? How many right? How many up? Oh, how many right? How many up? Or how many yeah. up? How many right? Well, either way, it doesn't really matter. Oh, I did a three up and then 10 to the right. Okay. And so this, this point T is transformed the same amount. 10 right and three up. Although I think Something's not right here. It's none of those answers are correct. <laughs> um, so up three, right 10, that's what you said. Is it P? We'll be looking at T prime, the image trapezoid. Same transformation we applied in trapezoid STUV. Hmm. To me, it's, oh, it is right. I'm sorry. They, so you can apply this transformation. It is here. I'm sorry. So I would get the point of T and then do this this X plus 10, Y plus three, and that there will be, there will be an answer there. Uh, I got seven up and then six. No, 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 no. You're, you're not, you're not hearing me. Uh, Would it be 16, seven? Yes, it was 16 and then, yes, yeah, seven. Yes, yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go on to the next one here. Um, sometimes these just don't work out the way we want. Um, let's clean. Okay, triangle joy is translated using the rule plus three y minus two create the triangle j prime o prime y prime. If a line segment is drawn from point j to point j prime, point o to o prime, we better describe the uh, the line segments. Okay, I feel like we did a problem just like this. Um, and I think I think what I did here is I I made a small triangle, you know, just just graphed one, and then we we did the transformations. We did plus three on the on the x, so right three on the x, and then down two on the y. One two three. One two. One two three down two. One two three down two, and then we we said okay, well that was j o y, so that's j prime o prime y prime like that. All right. So now when you connect O to O prime and and J to J prime, like what do you see here? They're parallel. They're parallel. They sure look like it. So that would probably be my uh my answer. And they 
are likely congruent. Okay, so new problem here. Um, again, I feel like we did this. Are you sure we haven't done this uh, here uh, recently? No, I don't believe so. Okay, why don't you give us one try? I'm gonna step away for like two minutes again and uh, just see what you uh, come up with. All right. All right, so what did you come up with here? Um, I was deciding between the bottom two. Okay. Uh, so the 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 thing here is that is it's got to get back to itself yeah so the uh the uh series of transformation that will not okay so not means like most of them do so if you go if you go everything uh if you go down to so everything goes down to so it's like this down to and you reflect it over the line y equals one, yeah, you're gonna get back to where you started. So that one's that one's good. And then we might as well go to the next one here. Uh, we're going to go up to uh, or right to. So that's that's something like this. And uh, then we're gonna over the line x equals three, x equals three like that. And um, so that becomes um that gets back there, so that one's out. And so yeah, it's down to the last two. All right, so then uh, last one here, uh, x plus three, y plus three. So that's that's like going up and to the right. So up three, one, two, three, one, two, three, like that. And then the line. Uh, 
and then so the line there'd be over this line right here yeah i feel like we did so are you sure we haven't done this one before no this is um okay so, so that reflects back so that one's out so it must be must be the last one there all right i i swear we haven't done this no this you know, is, i got a um, pretty i got a pretty like good memory so it's when i see something it's because i don't want to waste your time it's like hey we've already done this you know i don't know but uh i get it we can just keep going here we got a couple minutes left we've probably done problems similar yeah so this one's rotated 90 degrees uh clockwise so what that means is and i'm going to uh have to grab the uh, reference sheet here is um Here are the rotation rules. Let me snip those in. All right, so the uh, the the 90 degrees clockwise is this one right here. So it's this rule. So you've got to figure out the, the coordinates of A and then use this rule to, to find the new coordinates. Oh. So wouldn't it be the third one? Uh, sure looks like that's the only one that works. It's, all, it's, it's the only one that's got the right rule. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that is a way to kind of do these that are, you know. There. So all right, let's see if we get this last one done here before, uh, before we run out of time here. Which statement accurately describes how to reflect point A, three comma negative one over the y-axis? Construct a line from A parallel to the x-axis. Determine the distance from A to the x-axis along this parallel line. Find a new point on the other side of the x-axis that is equal distance from the x-axis. Okay. Wow. So there's a lot of words here. Um, if if here's point three negative one, here's the which axis is this? Y-axis. So here's the y-axis, and here's three negative one. So to 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 reflect over it, it's it's back over here. Oh. So somehow you got to say something that there's like a perpendicular that goes over the y axis, something like that. All right. So it's it's not parallel, it's not parallel. So it must be one of the others here and it's over the the y axis and this one has y axis. So probably that one. Yeah. All right. So thank you so much for uh scheduling today. We're going to go ahead and stop right here.